I stand in all of your power How you took the dust and formed a man Hung the stars by your mighty hand You are a strong and mighty tower You are righteous, you are holy I bow before you, Lord of glory Cause you are Lord and King Of everything to give you praise Is why I sing no other name It's like your name Yesterday, today, and forever the same And you deserve the highest praise You conquered death and rose from the grave Jesus, you are great The miracles I've read about How you healed the man with the withered hand Opened blinded eyes, made lame walk again It's how you've cleansed my soul from every sinful stain I've been born again and I proclaim You are Lord and King of everything to give you praise It's why I sing no other name It's like your name Yesterday, today and forever the same And you deserve the highest praise you conquer man with the withered hand open blinded eyes made lame walk again the greatest miracle there is no doubt is how you cleanse my soul from every simple stain
all the time, saith the Lord.
that uh, he taught you how to watch and pray. Amen. We want the ushers to come in to have a special need. I want to receive a real good offering tonight. I have a need in mind that I want us to help. And I know you're going to help us. Jesus is going to. He said he would. And you're going to give. Because you have confidence that I'm doing the right thing. Amen. So let's give a good offering. Real good. A special need. Father, I'm not going to beg. I believe the people will respond. And we ask you to bless this offering multiplied in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Again, we're glad to have all the visitors with us. Brother Klein, good to see you with us. I preached his daddy's funeral several years ago, maybe not too long ago, but a number of years. And there was a sister that was with Brother McPeters, uh, Kim Alton. He used to come here years ago, his wife. We want to pray for her. He said, I didn't see her there for a minute. She disappeared for a moment from my eyes, but now I can see her. My eyes are playing tricks on me. Don't you talk about me now. Don't you love the Lord? Aren't you? <laughs> it means something to be ready. And you're the only one really knows that down in your heart. Other people may not know what you know, but you know if you're ready or not. Pals, I'm loving you. have been praying for you. Amen. And all of you, I pray for you. Worship God as they come to sing a special song at this time. Well, everybody's getting ready. Um, I started to um, testify this morning when Daniel asked if anybody, anybody had anything to say about what God had done for them. And I put this on Facebook. I don't, you know, a lot of people don't like Facebook, but all of my friends are Christian friends, and I make sure of that. But I testified to them uh, last week. Uh, some of you may not know, I've battled with rheumatoid arthritis for almost 17 years, and God has brought me a long, long way. Um, it, when I first had it, I couldn't hardly move. Uh, it hurt to pull a sheet across my body, and God promised me that with time, I would get better, and I have, and I thank him for that. Uh, but uh, last week, um, my hip started hurting, and um, always before if it did I put a little heat on it and I did that and uh, after I did that I was not able to walk and um, I couldn't even lift my leg up at all and uh, I called my sister Kay and I texted my daughters and uh, Kay prayed with me over the telephone and I went to bed that night and I told God I said I'm giving this I'm committing this to you and I know that you will touch me and heal me. And I could tell from, I mean, almost immediately that that pain was leaving my body. And so when the next morning when I got up, I could still feel it a little bit. But um, I put on Facebook, I said, I, you know, just exactly what I told you. And then I told God, uh, 
I told them on there, I said, and I expect for my, for my hip to be totally better by the end of this day. And it was. Because I believe that what Brother Story, I believe it was last, last week or maybe the week before, and it stuck with me. Faith is not just words, it's actions. And because I showed God that I had faith that he was going to heal me, he did. And he can do it for you. And there's other issues that go along with this RA. I've been having trouble for I don't know how long with my, my voice being raspy. And um, my stomach has been hurting. But God's going to heal me. I know he is. And uh, my blood work came back bad the last time. I've got to have it done again. But I'm trusting God. I don't sit around and worry about, Lord, I've got cancer. Lord, something's wrong with my blood. I don't, I don't do that. It crossed, the devil will make you think about it. But when he does, I say, God's got this. And I'm not worried. And I, I don't want you to worry. I want you to be, trust God and walk in faith that God can touch you. Just like, I, I'm, I'm so thankful. I remember back, I know I'm taking a little bit of time. But in 2014, when, when Matthew asked me to sing out there at the May Day thing, and I couldn't come up with the song that I wanted to sing. And the Monday before the Saturday that it was to be held, me and the, I hadn't slept good the night before. And me and the girls were taking a nap. I was trying to take a nap. And God ran words through my mind with the melody. And he gave me this song we're going to sing tonight. And he has given me seven others. Now, I don't know why he gave them to me because... Like I told Daniel, I said, I'm not a songwriter. He said, well, you are now. But uh, <clears throat> I don't play the piano. I do have a good ear, but I don't play the piano. It's hard for me. I have to get Twyla to help me and Daniel to help me and Leanne helps me, you know. But um, I just praise God for all he's done for me. He's kept me all this time. He raised me up. I was raised in the church of God. I didn't live right for a long, long time. In fact, right before I came to Dallas in, in 1996, in 1995, August the 31st, he saved my soul and set me free from a life of sin. He saved me, sanctified me, and filled me with the sweet Holy Ghost. And I'm so thankful to be part of. When we were in, down in the, uh, the class tonight with, with Matthew talking about, you know, what we're going to do for Easter for the kids, I, I said, Lord, I am so thankful to be a part of the Dallas Church of God, where I know these people love you and they want their children to love you. Not just a form of religion, but a true experience. And that's what God has given me, and I'm so thankful, and I hope you are too. Will you please worship with us when we sing, as we sing this song? Before we sing, Brother Tim Bolin is at home, very sick tonight. He wasn't able to be here. Can we just ask the Lord to heal him right now? We just pray for him. God, we come before you, Father. We ask that you touch Brother Bowling. God, he's a faithful child of yours, and he loves you. And we just want you to go where he is right now, God, and relieve this sickness, God, and let him get better right now. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He brought me out. He brought me out of the fiery furnace. He brought me through. He brought me through the raging sea. He taught me how to never trust him. Now I have and now I have sweet victory. He brought me out. He brought me out of the fiery furnace.
victory I now can claim you And every day That passes by I know I'm safe With my dear Jesus For he will never leave my Just bow before him down on your knees. You can be sure that he will hear and he will answer. He'll give you peace and joy.
Jesus and have his love forevermore.
praying brother mcpeters brother gerald mcpeters come up here brother yeah you you ain't the you're the only mcpeters in here besides Rhonda. come up here brother zolly this morning when i had asked for testimonies Zolly said he was going to stand up, but he said the words escaped him. He said he couldn't put into words how good God has been to him. And after I sung that song, he said, that's all I could say is thank you. But he did say something to me. He said, I look back and he said, everything that the enemy meant bad for me, God turned it around and made it good. Just like the Bible says. Brother McPeters needs that as a personal situation in his life. He needs God to turn this thing around. He's got a situation that he's been praying for earnestly, and he believes it. But I believe tonight, I feel like if Zolly could pray for him, and that same thing will happen, what is meant for bad for him, this is a good man right here. He loves God. God uses him. I believe we can get the answer tonight, Brother Gerald. I believe that. I believe tomorrow you can call me shouting a victory over this. Rosali, pray for him and let's let's all pray for him that this will happen.
find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faith cry. And he will answer the was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little fire from heaven filled my soul, yeah, it made my heart in love, and it wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole, first had a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our trouble, he would hear our friends cry. And it will answer by and by When you feel a little pain will turn it Though a little fire is burning You will find a little talk with Jesus Makes it right You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right.
but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. Well, I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk, but Jesus makes it right. Well, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little barrel turning, you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. When you feel a little barrel turning, you know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. and fears and my eyes may fill with tears but Jesus is a friend and he watches day and night yeah I go to him in prayer and then he knows my every care and just a little talk Jesus makes it right well let us have a little talk with Jesus let us tell him all of our trouble he will hear our face cry he will answer by and by Find a little talk with Jesus makes it things I thank my Savior for. Many times I praise Him and His name adore. But the greatest thing is what He did for me. 
when he died upon the cruel old cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for your death on Calvary. I'm so glad you paid the price that I could be set free. Thank you for saving me. come for me to leave down here when I take my flight above the atmosphere I will join all those to make the heavens ring well in that mighty chorus where I know I will ever sing well thank you Lord for saving me thank you for your the price that I could be set free. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for your death on Calvary. I'm so glad you paid the price that I could be set free. Praise the Lord. Raise up your hands and praise Him. Amen. The Lord's in the house. There's nothing that God can't do. A good old-fashioned blessing makes a lot of cures. Cures a lot of things. God's a healer. He's a healer of broken hearts. He's a healer of discouraging spirits. He's a healer of wrecked lives he can put it back together again amen amen now brother heron was going preaching just go ahead and preach wednesday night we won't preach tonight but he'll he'll be ready aren't you glad you came to church people back here be being blessed in these altars i'm telling you that's what it's all about it's about getting through to god if you seek I want total commitment. I want you to stay before my presence. I am able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works within you. Release your faith. Hang on to victory. Keep your eyes upon me. 
for my coming is even at the door, saith the Lord. Raise your hands and praise him. I believe it. I believe Jesus is coming. Amen. I just appreciate what God's done tonight. We all need to be refreshed every once in a while. You know, we, we all have trouble. I mean, you, you're not going to find anybody here that don't have some trouble. Uh, Job said in Job 14 and 1, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. But he's, a, he's a, able to take care of your trouble. That's what he's for. He pulls us together. He gives us victory. He helps us to see things according to his way, not our way. We can always have visions of how things ought to be, but it's not about me and it's not about you. It's about him. It's about him. I have to stay in his presence. I have to. Because, uh, you know, I can't make it without him. I, I'm telling you, I, I just can't. I can't preach without him. I can't sing without him. I can't pray without him. My God, I need him. If we can realize that and we go after him because we are in desperate need, we'll see victory. We'll see God. We'll see the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just stand and raise your hands and praise him right now all over this building. Lift up your hands high. Praise God. These, these can continue to pray. Just praise him with all of your heart. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to dismiss this service. If you want to leave, you can. You don't have to. Yes. I want to say something real fast. I was standing out at that altar, and God laid this on my heart. I want to thank our children workers for the way they pour into our children. They poured into me. Twyla and my daddy and Sister Joan, they poured into my life. And now they're poured into my son's life. And I want them to know I appreciate everything that they do to sacrifice to teach my son and to teach all of our children. When I looked at these young people down here praying, and I, that's what it's all about. What it's all about is them. It's all about you and us. But I just wanted to say, I just felt led to say that, that I want to thank you children workers, every single one of you, and our new youth pastor and his wife. I want to thank y'all for pouring into my children. I know Hunter's excited. He's only 10, but he thinks he's 13 right now. He thinks he's ready to go up with Brother Sister Heron. I'm like, you can't go yet, son. It's not time. But he's excited, and I want him to stay excited. He's a light to people on, at school, and it's tough on our children. He'll come home and tell me things sometimes they say, but he says, Mom, I don't listen to their music, and I don't do this. And, and I'm like, thank you, Lord. He's, he's listening. And he brought a little boy with him the other night. They go to another uh, church of God, and so sometimes they don't have church on Wednesday. So I asked his mom, I said, would you be interested in letting him come with Hunter? And he got to come Wednesday night, and he loved it. He absolutely loved it. And he told me on the way home, he said, now, I don't know those songs yet. And I said, well, this, this is your first night. And he said, now, I didn't know those questions. He said, but Hunter helped me so that I could raise my hand and answer those questions. And so you never know, young people. You never know what light you are to people that you hang around with. Even these little children, you never know what influence that they're having on people at school. So I just felt led to tell our workers, thank you. And, and of course, our pastor and pastor's wife, thank you that you, all the years I've been here, you poured into my life and you're still pouring into my life. And I just want y'all to know how much I love and how much I appreciate all you have done for my family through the years. God bless you. Thank you, sister. That's so wonderful. I feel led to say the same thing, Leanne. Isn't that funny? Tonight we had a meeting, and let me announce it. It'll be first announcement. April 15th, we're going to have an Easter. It's called Journey to Jerusalem, and we're going to do this with the kids out here. It's ages 2 to 12. And I'll have some more information, and you'll see the, sign up, you know, the little sheet up here. There's going to be different times you drop your children out, but if you drop them all out at 10 o'clock, that's okay. We have a setup for that too. But tonight I was in the children's ministry workers meeting, and I looked around at our children's ministry workers, you guys. We have a fantastic children's ministry group. We don't have a lot of trouble we, don't have, we work well together. That speaks volumes of unity in our church, which we cannot let go of. The devil would love to destroy the unity of our church. Because when you have unity and you're of one faith and one mind, the devil knows it's so much harder to break into that. He wants to destroy the unity so he can get to the core. So he can destroy that core. And you know what? Some of that core is our children. And I looked over our children's ministry workers tonight. I took, me and Amy went to a conference this past week. It was a Friday, Saturday conference. And we signed up Adeline for their children's ministry. Now, this is a children's church. And I took her in there. And I had to let her stay because we signed up and we couldn't take her to class with us. 
But when I got in there, the music they were playing did not agree with my soul whatsoever. I thought, what is this in this children's ministry? And, it, and you know, now they didn't play it the whole time because I asked them, I said, is this music going to be playing? They said, no, we're getting ready to turn it off. I said, all right. But I went in there at the end of it, and this guy was on stage, and he was up there, and it just wasn't right. Something just was not right. And I told Adeline, I said, you don't do what that boy did. I said, she said, I know it. I don't like that. <laughs> I thought, God, develop a pure spirit in her so that when she's in this world and sees things that are in the world, even though it may say God on it, even though it may say Christian on it, that doesn't mean it's of Christ. Doesn't mean it's of God. And even my daughter of three and a half, she's not even saved yet. She knew the difference. She knows the difference. But the devil would love to get in our children's mind and confuse them about what the difference is. And I looked at our children's ministry workers team tonight, and I'm so thankful. And I want to say that too, Sister Leanne. Sister Twyla and Sister Joan and Brother Gene, they've helped us. They've taught me my whole life, and we're teaching children. Look at these young people praying in this altar. That's what it's about, you guys. It's about that experience with God. And I want to say thank you to our children's ministry team because you are an amazing group of Holy Ghost-filled people. And I'm so proud you teach my daughter. I'm so proud you'll teach my other child. God bless it. Let it be healthy. <clears throat> I pray that you guys continue to pray for our children's ministry team and all of our children in this church. If you don't have a prayer list, get in that, in that book we're getting ready to put out and write down every single child in this church's name, every single young person in this church's name, and you go over that list. When I pray for our children, I put my hand, I pray for each one individually, but I put my hand over that list and I say, God, protect every single person, every single child on this list from anything the devil may throw in their way. Let them raise up and be warriors for you, God. Warriors for you to fight in this world that is so evil. It's taking the sword of the Spirit to fight in this world and the helmet of salvation and the full armor of God to be able to stand what those wiles are out there, church. It's hard on our young people. It's hard on our children when you think you can be a boy or a girl or whatever you want to be in this day and age that they're trying to push into our children's mind and desensitize them at a young age. I'm thankful that there's a safe haven. A man was talking about safe haven I, at the conference we went to. I'm glad there's a safe haven. Let's be unified. Let's pray for our children and young people. And let our children's ministry team, you guys are fantastic. I love you. Let's continue to be that safe haven for our children. Amen. I think they're going on a trip, a couple of these folks here, young people. I'm going to anoint them. You have to leave. You can. We're going to keep praying with these kids around here till they want to stop. We'll pray with them. But if you leave, just leave quietly and have fellowship with one, each other. I'm not dismissing. Just pray with them as long as they want to pray. We don't want to interrupt that. 